welcome to the channel. And if you are a subscriber, welcome back and thank you for subscribing. So this video is really going to be about these mysterious oil pumps on these Sea-Doo jet skis. But this video, we're going to really get down to some details and understanding exactly how they work. And in particular, you'll see why you cannot change exchange parts between these. They all have the same body, at least between the 787s and the 951s. They have exactly the same bodies, and you can exchange the parts, the brackets, the levers, this piece here, but it won't work. And I'm going to go through and explain why that is. There's a little piston inside there. And that piston, it's this little sleeve, and it moves up and down. I'm going to see if I can get it to move up and down for you. Watch it real close. See it move down? It moved down just a tick, about a sixteenth of an inch. Okay, and then it's coming back up. But here's the thing, is that that little, I'm going to call it a piston. It's actually a piston that rotates. We'll get to that in a second. But it's not that this goes up and down equally with a revolution. It's not symmetric. It's very juxtapositional with the orientation of the shaft. Okay, and the up and down motion of that is what controls the intensity of the pressure and the flow that comes out of these two channels here. And they normally have, you know, fittings in them like this. And if you keep an eye on the surface of that little ring there, that's the little piston, right now it's at, it's top dead center. And the, the little this is a D shaft, and so it's flat on one side, and right now it's facing straight up. And that's also these oil marks that we talk about, when those things are aligned, that just means that this is faced straight up and that this piston here is at top dead center. Now I'm going to slowly rotate it to 90 degrees right there. You notice how it dropped down about a sixteenth of an inch or so. That is as far as it'll go. That's bottom dead center. If I continue to rotate it, so now I am at 180 degrees, and notice it is still bottom dead center, hasn't changed. I'm going to continue to rotate it, still bottom dead center. It's not until I get to about 270 degrees, and it very quickly snaps back to top dead center like very abruptly, it's not gradual. Notice now it's all the way back to the top. Okay, and if I continue to rotate it, then it we, we're making a full revolution there and now it's all the way back to the top again. So that's what I mean by it's not symmetric. So let's, let's look at <clears throat> what this really looks like. So I made this little chart to make this easy to explain. So what we just did is at top dead center, you know, this is where you are idling. And as you give it throttle, you're opening it gradually until you get to bottom dead center, which is wide open throttle. After that, you know, even if wide open throttle is down in this range, but it stays wide open oil, which is, you know, bottom dead center of that piston, all the way up into about 270 and then it suddenly jumps back up to top dead center which is minimal oil flow so <clears throat> what this means is this is your gradient here between top dead center and bottom dead center where you've got a graduated flow and then down here this full 180 degrees it's all maximum oil flow and that's what this fail safe is. These things have a spring on them, and if that's if the cable breaks, they're designed to rotate and flip back where they're 
they're in this range down here, which is maximum oil flow. So if you think about this, you know, anywhere from here to here, you've got 270 degrees of some kind of oil flow, and half of that is maximum oil flow. It's only in this 90 degree range here where you have minimal oil flow. And the engineers, the way they set these pumps up is it's really almost impossible to end up in this zone right here. Even if the cable breaks or something like that, you know, I think the spring would have to come off and the cable would also have to break. You know, something really strange would have to happen. Highly unlikely you would end up in this area here. And that would only be a problem if you were running something other than idle but that's that's how they when you hear us talk about if the cable breaks it it defaults to wide open throttle oil this is what they mean and that's how it happens so the important thing to notice here too is that this only works counterclockwise because this pump is for a you know 800 or a 787 and even though the pump body is exactly the same as this one, so let's look at these two. These are two working pumps, and the one on the left is a 787, and the one on the right is a 951. And if you look at the cam orientations, uh, maybe it's better to show it like this. You know, they're inverted, so it's like looking in a mirror. These two are inverted. Even though the bodies are the same, they are not the same. So what you cannot do is you cannot take the lever off of this and put it on this one and the bracket and switch them over. It will not work. And the reason it will not work is when you think about it, if you were to switch them, you know, now your throttle pull is going to be from the opposite direction. It's going to be clockwise. And look at what's happening on this particular pump that we're looking at. Clockwise, if we were to do that, there is no oil here. So you will most definitely burn up your engine trying to do something like that. So keep that in mind. So I'm going to run this drill. And when I do this, though, I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to open it to maximum wide open throttle because that's important. That's when you see the maximum motion of what's going on with these pumps, okay? And then I want you to look and notice what's going on here. Did you see that? So what's happening is not only is the piston moving up and down, creating pressure, it's also rotating. Okay, it's spinning, and it's got little channels in there. And so as it's spinning, it's sending oil to one side or the other. So there you go. Now you know mostly how they work. But I learned a lot going through this. I hope you did too. hope this answers some of your questions. It certainly did for me. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll uh, catch you on the next video.